Somerset hit back as bowlers hold sway at Taunton. Early championship leaders Somerset were frustrated by the weather as they pursue victory at the end of a pulsating contest against champion Surrey last week. This round they hosted a Warwickshire side who were thrashed by Hampshire last time out. The post opening batsman Dom Sibley in record breaking form after his 600 in as many games. Somerset and Marcus Truscothic made a fast start when asked about first with nine coming off the first over of the day. But the veteran opening batsman was gone in the very next over as he edged into the waiting hands of Sibley at slip. Ali and new man Hildreth recovered well however with Hildreth stroking a couple of stylish boundaries through the covers. But he too fell soon after as he tried to put away a Brooks long hop but only succeeded in picking out Yates at point. That brought the skipper Abel to the crease and he put a couple of balls away to the rope off Norwell. They were to be Abel's final scoring strokes though as Han and Dorby won an LBW decision with a lovely ball. And in the following over Somerset were in a spot of bother as Norwell claimed his first wicket for his new county when he clean bowled Alley with a ball that was fast, full and straight. Norwell may have been straining a bit too hard though and Bartlett came out to clatter three boundaries from his next over. But he too fell after he was surprised somewhat by a short ball from Brooks and played on. Lewis Gregory rode his luck somewhat as he helped his side pass 100 with some unconvincing fours. Until he was also gone when Hannon Dolby returned for a new spell and produced a peach that took the edge with Banks claiming the catch to leave the host 143 for six going into lunch. After helping himself to a boundary through mid-wicket from the second ball after lunch, Overton was gone just two balls later when Norwell beat the outside edge to bowl him. Josh Davies settled quickly with a couple of lovely strokes for four off Patel. And the number nine kicked on to overtake his senior partner as he reached 30 with another couple of boundaries in an over off Patel. But Patel hit back to end the stand as Davis tried to clatter him through the offside, missed and fell LBW. And in the next over Han and Dolby returned to have Davy caught by Banks at slip of his third delivery. He needed just five more balls to bring the innings to a close, complete his five wicket haul and claim career best figures of five for 18 as he had Leach caught at slip for a duck. Rhodes began quickly in Warwickshire's reply as he found the rope twice from an Overton over. But a bad mix up soon after saw Rhodes run out by Abel. Sibley looked to be settling in and continuing his run of form as he picked up a couple of boundaries. Yates however didn't last long as he edged Overton behind to Davis. Sam Hayden came out to join Sibley and he started in typically belligerent fashion as he added a couple of fours to the total before the tea break came with his side 42 for two. Hayden picked up where he left off with two more early boundaries but Overton pinned him LBW. Before it became two wickets in successive overs for Overton as he removed new man Hose in identical fashion to leave the Warwickshire top order in disarray. That brought 19 year old Liam Banks to the crease to partner Sibley. He didn't seem overawed by the situation however as he sent Grunval to the rope twice in succession. Before disaster struck for Warwickshire in Grunwald's next over as informed Sibley perished for 26 as he outside edged to Overton in the gully. Banks and Ambrose dug in and played defensively to take their side past the 100 mark. Before Ambrose dragged Gregory onto his stumps as he attempted to be a bit more expansive. With the overs ticking down to the close Leach found the edge of Brooks's bat and he was caught by Gregory to bring about stumps. Leaving Warwickshire with only three wickets left and still 99 behind going into day two. Somerset four wickets from victory as Hayne holds the key for Warwickshire. Leader Somerset hit back late in the day with the ball after being bowled out for 209 by mid-afternoon on day one. Warwickshire meanwhile were hoping to get as close to Somerset's total as possible after closing 99 behind with three wickets remaining at Taunton. Jack Leach came on to complete his over and he struck again as he had Patel caught at cover with just the second ball of the morning. And Warwickshire were looking at a significant first innings deficit when Banks played around a straight one from Overton to fall LBW in the following over. 
before Overton completed his five-wicket haul by bowling Norwell behind his legs. Somerset began their second innings 74 ahead, and Truscothic made a fast start with back-to-back -back fours in Hannon Dorby's opening over, as Somerset looked to extend that lead. His partner Ali fell for a duck, however, as he had a prod at a back of a length ball from Norwell, with Rhodes taking the catch. And Norwell struck again in his next over, when he pinned Hildreth LBW. Truscothic was still ticking along though, and he was joined by Abel, who got going by finding the rope from consecutive balls off Norwell. But the ball after a square drive for four, Truscothic was also gone, as Norwell continued his destructive spell by pinning him LBW. Before that man, Norwell produced a perfect leg cutter to have him caught behind. Bartlett introduced himself to Henry Brooks with back-to-back -back boundaries, before the Somerset batsmen dug in in an attempt to reach lunch without any further loss. They had almost made it when Ambrose produced a stunning catch to remove Bartlett after Brooks had found the edge. Somerset reached 75 for 5 at the end of a chaotic session that saw 8 wickets fall, but their lead of 149 was already looking formidable on a sporting wicket. Norwell returned to bowl the first over after lunch and removed Lewis Gregory's off stump with the first ball of the session to complete his fifer. And from the first ball of his next over, Norwell had his sixth wicket when Davis couldn't resist a nibble outside off stump with Rhodes taking the catch at slip. Every run was precious for Somerset now as they attempted to set a target and Overton sent Norwell to the boundary twice in an over before Davy clipped Hannon Dorby off his legs and straight into the hands of the square leg fielder. Grunwald arrived at the crease and picked up two contrasting boundaries off Hannon Dorby. And Overton added two more of his own off Brooks, before Grunwald thrashed a six over mid-wicket off Brooks to take the lead past 200. Brooks had his man the very next ball, however, as Grunwald threw the kitchen sink at a short ball but could only edge behind. Last man Jack Leach hung around long enough to push the lead on to 239 before he misjudged a cut and edged Norwell behind to Ambrose giving Norwell the superb figures of 7 for 41. That left Warwickshire needing the highest score of the game to win, a tough ask on a wicket that had assisted the bowlers all game. And their job got harder when Rhodes fell in the first over of the chase, a fine ball from Gregory drawing the edge. Warwickshire's response was to counter-attack with both Yates and Sibley picking up a pair of fours off Gregory. But the leading wicket-taker in Division 1 struck back on the stroke of T as he removed Yates to leave Warwickshire 26 for 2, with the target of 239 looking a long way off. Sibley's chance to extend his run of centuries in successive first-class matches ended when he edged Jack Leach to slip for 24 not long after T. And Overton continued his brilliant game as he trapped Hose LBW for 4. Sam Hain was trying to hold the chase together as he kept the score ticking over. But Banks didn't last long before he fell LBW to Abel for 11. Ambrose came out to join Hain, but when he was called through for a quick single by his partner, he was beaten by the direct hit from Bartlett to leave Somerset four wickets from victory. If Warwickshire were going to get anywhere near their target, it was probably up to Hain to do the lion's share of the scoring and boundaries off Davy and Abel took him to 38 not out. Hayne holds the key for Warwickshire, but Somerset will feel confident of claiming the last four wickets on day three and cementing their place on top of Division One. Hayne defiance in vain as Somerset complete three-day win. Championship leader Somerset needed a further four wickets on day three to complete victory at Taunton. Warwickshire, meanwhile, required another 136 runs, with Sam Hayne well placed on 43 not out. Hayne collected the first boundary of the day to move to 47, before Somerset made the early breakthrough they would have wanted, when Gregory had Brooks caught behind in the third over of the day. And it looked as though the game would be over in a hurry when Overton sent Patel's leg stump cartwheeling, with Warwickshire's target still 119 away. Haynes stood firm though and brought up his 50 with a single off Gregory. And Norwell showed why he has a first class 100 to his name as he found the boundary from Overton and Grunwald. The pair had stood firm together for nine overs to bring the target down to single figures before Grunwald got one to seam and take Norwell's edge. 
before Hayne decided he was going to have to get on with things if his side were to have any hope of reaching their target. And Hannon Dorby joined in with a couple of contrasting boundaries of his own. More fours moved Hayne on to 92 not out as the target moved to within 50 when Gregory held his nerve to have Hannon Dorby caught at gully by Overton. That gave Somerset 20 points and their third win of the season to consolidate their position at the top of the table and it consigned Warwickshire to their third defeat as they advanced with just three points.